Hi everyone, I'm Victor Coutelli and I work as a cloud engineer at Societe Generale, one of the biggest and oldest banks in France. And this time I will share with you how we achieve a single OpenStack deployment in multiple data centers. So to begin, let's focus on the characteristic of our OpenStack deployment. So for the distribution, we are using an open source deployment of Cola Ansible and we are fully powered by Docker containers or Ansible playbook. So it is fully community edition. Then we are using the Stein version of OpenStack. So we initially installed it in Queens, then upgraded in Rockies and Stein. And I agree we are a little bit late in OpenStack version, but we soon plan to upgrade to train on usury. And in terms of access, it is very important for the rest of the presentation that we are not exposing directly the OpenStack API to the customer. We are using an API endpoint to act as a proxy custom-based for Societe General. So it implements the authentication process of Societe General and the logging framework. But it is not much intelligence in this uh, wrapper. It is just a Societe General branded API to expose near natively Nova and Neutron API, by example. So not much intelligence, but it is important to say it exists. And it is this API endpoint which are exposed in the cloud portal of Societe General for all the cloud services, or even it is used in our own Terraform provider, or our API, or CLI, or SDK. Then for storage, we are using Ceph for storing our image or our VM. And for volumes, we are using pure storage for, as a single backend. And in terms of deployment, we currently have three, uh, four, uh, five IoT zones, sorry, in three regions around the world. And we count around 120 compute nodes. And the biggest region hosted in Paris is about 80 compute nodes. And it is deployed as much as possible in a full CI CD through Jenkins. So everything, every configuration, every upgrade is stored in Git, then deployed either via Jenkins or either via an administration container. And for networking, we are, we are using provider network using OVS. So no SDN feature here, except for security group filtering, but we are not using overlay network. It is only about VLAN. So the repartition of our deployment are two regions in France and the one in Paris we will focus during this presentation on two availability zones in different data centers. And we count around 20,000 VM creation or distribution per month. And we host our, around 5,000 instances worldwide. And the target of this cloud is to host cloud native applications. So we can find some big data, some web application, some grid use case, or Kubernetes cluster itself, or load balancing stuff exposed to our customers. That is only for transformed and cloud ready application. And we contribute nearly 4,000 4, lines of codes directly to the community, mainly in Glance or Nova project but in various ones like Cola, Cola Ansible, Silometer, It. And we made another talk earlier this morning about that story. But let's focus on the Paris region and its architecture. So as I said, we really need to expose the cloud services as a region in Paris with two different data centers. So why we not create two different OpenStack regions? Because we, if we made a little pros of cons, the first pros will be it is really easy. You just need to have three controllers on each data center with some compute nodes and you're ready to go. And in terms of configuration, it is only a new configuration in our CI CD because everything is stored in Git. We just need to add a new directory in your Git repository for storing the new region. So it's not a problem of deployment or management. And we have also Keystone Federation features available. So we can federate our project between our OpenStack using Keystone Federation. But that's 
for the pros, but in terms of inconvenience, we have a lot to, and that's big. Because by example, we have no capability to replicate our image in the region in all the availability zone. And we also have no possibility to extend the security group between a region. And in our case, it will be between availability zone because customer want to consume Paris region as a single region. Like in AWS, when you deploy a web application, your security group can be used in various availability zones in order to be resilient. So it is a strong problematic for customers to have shared security group in the same region. And it will bring a lot of complexity in this IPI endpoint we only use as a proxy because we need to mask the fact that there is two OpenStack behind the single OpenStack endpoint. So it will be a lot of complexity in our Python code on top of OpenStack and we want to be as light as possible. And another specificity is between our two data center, we have a latency of less than 5 milliseconds and we have no extended layer 2. So it is a rooted network, but there is no extended layer 2 between the two availability zones. So we decided to make only one extended OpenStack region to expose it to customer as one OpenStack region. So now let's focus on this Paris region. So everything begins with a GSLB instances at the top. So it's just a DNS alias who will equally redirect traffic to the local VIP address. And why there is two local VIP address, one per availability zone? It is because there is no extended layer two in this environment. So the local VIP address in case of failure of one availability zone cannot automatically fail over to the other data center because there is no extended layer 2. So we have two controllers with keep alive and VRLP protocol who will fail over between themselves the local VIP address and the same in the other IoT zone. And every OpenStack access are unloaded by GSLB who will load balance a layer upper the whole process. So it's very convenient to have two controllers per IoT zone because in terms of maintenance window, you can shut down any controllers, then the local VIP will fail over to the other controllers. And it is very easier to rely on VRP failover rather than the GSLB instance failover itself, because it's not a load balancer. And that is why we have two controllers. And in order to guarantee the quorum in the clusters, we have a Galera arbitrator component on the third side who assure the quorum of the Galera clusters. So in case of split brain, by example, an isolated availability zone, it will stop by itself because the Galera cluster will not be reachable anymore. So that's why we just need a Galera arbitrator because it will not handle the SQL request. It will just here to provide the quorum to the right availability zone, so the one left. So with that setup, we are able to lose totally uh, an availability zone. And in terms of compute, we have two compute aggregates. So it's just aggregate host in Nova terminology with availability zone. And we have a local safe cluster in each data center because nobody wanted them to run half on the data centers and half on the, uh, the other data centers. So that is actually for this global architecture. But now, let's see how we can deploy that because it requires some tweaks in the configuration files and we see that using call Ansible, it will be very easy to unleash the Ansible power to perform that kind of deployment. So as we are using call Ansible, and call Ansible is just basic Ansible, you can use any features available in Ansible by default. So in Ansible, you have group verse notion and you can create group verse in call Ansible in order to have different configuration for each group. So in our case, it will be one group per availability zone. So let's see how it looks like. So you have a etc cola directory with a group verse directory, which will be natively handled by Ansible. And we have two group verse, one for the first and one for the second availability zone. And you can see, by example, a different network interfaces because the VLAN are not the same between the data centers. 
So you have one IZ in VLAN 200 and one, one another IZ in 400 the network interfaces. You have also a different VIP address, so its local VIP address can be overridden. And you have a node config directory because Cola allows you to override part of a OpenStack component config file, by example, a Nova or Neutron and Conf, and everything is located in this node config directory. So with that setup, you are able to have a different node config directory or a different Nova.conf, by example, per group. So in that case, the Nova.conf is different to target either the first safe cluster or the second safe cluster. And it is very useful to ensure that every compute node every compute node targets its own local safe clusters. So here, it is only about configuration file and no modification of code Ansible, just plain Ansible. So it is very easy to store it in Git and to deploy it on demand. So after we deploy that, we encounter some issue. And the first one was about neutral. Because um, by default, when you create a provider network, you need to specify the network, the VLAN ID at the network level. And as I said, we don't have extended layer to even for customer VM in that environment. So for the VM builded in the first ability zone, we need to create a first network with its associated subnet, and the same in the second ability zone. So at the end, we have two neutral network objects with two subnet associated. And with that setup, there is a strong problem in terms of user experience because you can't prevent user to create a VM in the wrong availability zone in the wrong network. By example, using the network one in AZ2. And nobody will prevent the user to create that until the very end of the provisioning process when Neutron will fail to allocate the network and your VM will go to error state. And it is a very bad user experience because you need to think about what network is available in what in which availability zone, otherwise you will get an error during the provisioning. So to fix that, we are using a neutron feature called neutron rooted provider network available from Newton. And with that setup, it will introduce a notion of segment. And this segment will be between the network and the subnet and the VLAN notion will be handled by the segment and no longer by the network. So you will be able to have one logical object, network, who will be available everywhere in all your availability zone. And on this network, you will have dedicated segments per availability zone. And each segment will contain, will contain its own subnet. And with that setup, you will be able to select your network and any availability zone, then Neutron will be able to discover which segment and which subnet is present on the host chosen by Nova. And this mapping is done by the configuration, so the FizzNet attribute you can find in your ml2.conf file in OVS, so for the bridge mapping, and you just need to insert that FizzNet on the definition of the segment and everything will be handled by Neutron. So just have different FizzNet per availability zone. And everything is doable with Cola too. So we fix the Neutron challenge. But there is another one. About Glance. And the Glance challenge was more complicated because here is an example of a standard Glance deployment based on Ceph. So you have your Glance control plane who is configured you can see at the right to target your safe clusters. Then when you send images, it will be stored in safe. And when a Nova compute is configured to use these safe clusters too, the magic happens, this famous copy and write, and it will start instantaneously your VM. So that's a very convenient and common use case when using safe on OpenStack. You want this famous copy and write to spin up your VM very fast. And it is working when you have only one Ceph, but as I said earlier, we have two Ceph clusters in our setup. So if we are configuring Glance, we are only able to configure one store. So either the first Ceph or the second Ceph. And it will work 
for the first AZ, by example, if we configure AZ1 in glance, but when we will spin up VM in AZ2, it will look into the, its local safe cluster, so the second safe, if the image is available, and it is not the case, so we will download image each time we want to create a VM from glance control lane. So, and it will not be put in cache, not with a safe backend. So if we want to spin up 10 VM in AZ2, we will download the raw image 10 times from the glance control plane. So it is a huge issue. And from Rocky, glance introduced the multi backend features. So it was very cool because we see we can configure multiple backends. So we can configure the first step on the second step cluster. And we can choose on which backend we can send the image either the one or either the two. But there is still a problem with that approach, is even if you can configure multiple backend, you need to choose only one. And once it is uploaded to one backend, it is finished. The image is available and Glance will make nothing more. So you can add manually location, but you will need to replicate this image manually. And Glance will not help you about that. So that's why, and it was released in U3 last year, we needed to add a new feature to Glance to give it as the ability to deploy an image in multiple stores. It is called the multi-store import, and it was released in Rosely publicly, in U3. And with that feature, we added the capability into Glance to deploy an image not only in one store, but in, the, uh, in an array of stores. And it will sequentially push the image in your stores. So with that pull request, it was merged for U3, we were able to fix the Glance challenge too. And from there, uh, Glance team also developed, by example, the ability to copy an image from a store to another. And for Victoria, we added in Glance the capability to um, provision, scene provision the image to be even more faster to provision and upload an image. But uh, at this time, we required a lot these features. So by pushing Colansible and Ansible to its limit, um, using rooted provider network in Neutron, and developing some code in Glance, that's how we achieved to stretch our OpenStack deployment. We now we know run about 3,000 VM and 80 compute nodes and it seems it went quite well. So, yeah, if you have any question, I think we can answer it live. Bye.